There. Okay. All right, everybody. Oh. It looks like we're ready to go. So I will um, thank you for joining us tonight. And we're doing a three-part series on hydroponic gardening. And this is part of the Gardening for Success series with Laramie County Master Gardeners and the University of Wyoming Laramie County Extension Office. And welcome to the program. And Mike Heath is our instructor for tonight. And Mike currently has a hydroponic system. He's actually working on his second system, if I <clears throat> am correct on that. So uh, Mike, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Mike, I'm gonna turn the program over to you. And again, if anyone has any questions and as we're going along, by all means, unmute yourself you know, open up the mic and, and ask Mike a question. Or if you're not comfortable with that, you can put your question in the chat box and then I'll interrupt Mike for you and ask the question. So with that, Mike, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thanks, Catherine, and welcome everybody. Glad you can be here. And uh, feel free to ask questions, but it always works better when it's interactive. Uh, and I don't mind questions at all. And you know, since we're looking at the slides, I'm not going to lose my place, so don't worry about that. Uh, so if you've got a question, just unmute and blurt it out. Uh, go ahead and feel free to interrupt. Uh, this series actually came apart from a question that was uh, blurted out during the uh, irrigation uh, seminar. And we had a gentleman ask if we were going to do something on hydroponics. And frankly, uh, Catherine and I hadn't thought about doing one on hydroponics at the time. And... So we put one together, and uh, this is a three-part series, as she did talk about. Um, is it possible it could turn into a four-part series? I'm working on a, a segment now, which will actually be how to build a hydroponic system uh, cheaply that you can use at home. So with that, we'll jump right into the introduction to hydroponics. And tonight truly is an introduction. Uh, we're not going to go into a great deal of detail on anything. Uh, except what hydroponics is, uh, the types of systems. Uh, so you start to get an idea, start thinking about what may work best for you. Because there's, there's several types of systems that are not all applicable in uh, all circumstances. Uh, as Catherine says, I am working with hydroponic systems now. I have three fully functioning systems. Uh, one that I use just for testing that's taken down. And I'm uh, about to start building a fourth system here before too much longer. And I'm working on several systems up in my greenhouse uh, once I get the cooling wall in. Uh, so I'll have a, a pretty good sized system and I'll show you some of those as we go along. So what is hydroponics? Okay, I see that's not gonna work too well. There. Hydroponics is just growing plants in a soilless environment. And uh, contrary to popular belief, we don't do it by just dropping plants in water. That doesn't work out very well. So we use a new liquid nutrient solution and an inert media for root support. Uh, there are several uh, nutrient solutions that you can use. There are several uh, different types of media. And they all have applicability in different situations. And as we go through the uh, other parts of the series, we'll go through what some of those are. Uh, some of the advantages of hydroponics, uh, obviously, year-round production. If you're indoors with it, you're not at the whims of the weather anymore. You don't have to worry about cold, heat, uh, drought, hail, like yesterday. Um, none of that's going to affect you. Uh, it's a very controlled environment. You get to choose what the temperature is going to be. You can choose the humidity. Uh, you can even uh, adjust the CO2 levels in that environment. You control the amount of light the plants get. So everything they get is totally dependent on you. Um, the only downside of that is they're totally dependent on you. Uh, so there's a, a pro and con to that. Uh, maintenance is a lot easier. There is no dragging hoses around. There's, uh, you don't have to worry about watching the water daily. Uh, and I mean by watching, going out and checking soil, making sure Certain areas aren't too, uh, too dry, certain areas aren't too wet, uh, moving things around that way, uh, which takes a lot of time and effort. Uh, you have one place on a hydroponic system to check all of this. And uh, as we go in through some of the other uh, segments, we'll discuss uh, how that happens. 
Uh, there is no weeding with hydroponics. To me, this is absolutely critical, and I am just jumping for joy that I don't have to deal with weeds anymore. Uh, the seeds that you get from the uh, nurseries are pure seeds. There's no weed seed in there. And uh, that, like I say, that's just wonderful news uh, to me. Uh, you have better control of your nutrients and your pH and your soil. As everyone knows, uh, the soil here in Wyoming runs anywhere from about 7 to 7.4, 7.5. A lot of your plants do better in uh, soils that run right around 6 to 6.2, 6.3. And getting soil pH down is uh, very difficult at best and impossible at worst. Uh, it just leaches out into the soil and the acidifier that you put on it just leaches out uh, and the soil just goes back to its natural uh, level and here it's a, a relatively basic soil um, so with the uh, hydroponics everything is contained in your tanks and so you have good control over your pH good control over your nutrients as well uh, because you have to check those almost daily and uh, you can adjust nutrients by adding to your uh, uh, nutrient level in your uh, solution. There's a decreased water usage and waste runoff. And the best example I can give you of this is my own system. I have a soil-based garden as well. And uh, this year I'm using about 2,240 square feet of that. Uh, it's growing corn. Um, as some of you heard Catherine and I talking about earlier, I have garlic in there, a little bit of wheat. Um, asparagus and strawberries in that soil based system. And I'm using in that system a little over a thousand gallons a week of water uh, just to keep everything. It, it varies a little bit. Uh, it decreases when I forget to go out and turn it on and it increases if the weather gets really hot, dry and windy. Uh, for the hydroponic system, and I'll show you the system in a minute that this is based on, I'm using about 30 gallons of water every 10 days. The footprint of that system is 48 square feet. The uh, growing surface of that system is 144 square feet. So you can see there's a huge difference in the water usage. I don't talk much about waste runoff in uh, this series. The reason being there's two types of system. There's a uh, recovery system and a disposal system. Recovery system is just that. It takes the uh, nutrient solution, runs it through, puts it back in the sump tank and uses it again. So you're just constantly turning over the same nutrient solution. In a disposal system, nutrient solution is used once and dumped. And to me, that just seems like one heck of a waste because the plants don't take all the nutrients out in one pass through. Uh, you have an increased growth rate of your plants up to about 25% faster. And most of that is due to the increased root mass that you get with a hydroponic system. And for the same reason, you get increased production. And I'll talk a little bit about some of that here in a few minutes. Um, but you can go year round, that increases your production. The faster uh, growth increases production. Vegetables ripen faster. Again, that increases your production. And uh, it just makes things a lot easier, a lot faster. If you're doing things commercially, uh, it increases your profitability. Um, and you have the ability to garden vertically. Uh, you don't have to have a uh, uh, two-dimensional system like you have on one plane on the ground you can now also stack different systems on top of each other so the basic components of, of every uh, hydroponic system are all the same they may look different uh, they may shift where they're located but it's basically all the same you start out with a sump tank right here and that just holds your nutrient solution um, and the sump tank can actually be attached to your grow tray here where your plants are at or it can be totally separate and you don't have a nutrient inflow it takes the nutrient into either the grow tray itself or onto the roots of the plant and then you'll have an outflow that will drain the system back into the sump tank there's a pump in the sump tank and that's what's taking care of moving all your nutrients around there are several different types of systems, and like I said, they, they all have their uh, uh, different uses. There's an ebb and flow system, nutrient film, deep water, uh, drip system, wicking system, and aeroponics, and we'll talk about each one of these separately. 
So this is an ebb and flow system. These are two of my systems that I have set up right now. And uh, these are the stack systems. This is one that I based that water usage on. This is about an 80 gallon sump tank here. And I have to replace it with about 30 gallons of water every 10 days or so. Uh, but you can see you have the uh, sump tank, the nutrient outflow right here comes across, drops nutrient into each of these trays. And then you have the drain that comes down here and back into the sump tank. Uh, better to see the drain on this one over here. You see the drain coming out with the valve to control the uh, flow. Another drain coming out here, valve. Another one here, valve. This is the actual drain pipe in the system itself. And there's a hole in this pipe that's right about here in that tray. And it's right at the bottom of the net pot. And the reason is, is when the water goes into the system, it'll flow up just over the top of that hole and it'll soak in that uh, root media. And then when the pump turns off, it'll drain it out so the roots can get some oxygen. Uh, it's also known as a flood and drain for that reason. It floods the system and it drains it back out. And you'll have that on a timer. Uh, these systems here just happen to be set on a half hour on, half hour off. And that means it'll flood for about a half hour and it'll go up over the uh, drain hole so it's overfilled. But it takes about 15 minutes or so to reach that drain hole as it drains back out. Each of these trays holds about 110 to 115 gallons. So besides the 80 gallons in the sump tank, each tray has a lot of water in itself, a lot of nutrient uh, media. Um, <clears throat> so they get about 15 minutes of exposure to air. It's not enough to dry them out, but it does allow them to pull in some oxygen themselves. That increases the size of the root system as they're searching for that liquid. Uh, it'll increase the mass, the bulk, uh, the strength of the roots. Uh, in future presentations, we'll show you a comparison of some of those roots. Um, and increased root mass just increases the uh, uh, plant growth and production. This is a nutrient film system. This particular system here is at Colorado State University. Uh, and that's probably pretty obvious because how nice it is. Uh, each tray is about two inches deep. And what these do is you have a continuous flow of nutrient flowing down the tray, so they go over the roots of the plant. And the trays are at a slight tilt, uh, probably about 10 degrees, uh, so the nutrient is flowing down. And you can see the nutrient outflow right here is the half inch poly tube going into a quarter inch tube into the end, which the nutrient flows down into a collection pipe at the other end. Now the downside of this particular system is just the way it's set up and you can't see their tank, but they've got a, a 55 gallon tank on this one. So it's actually as high as this pipe right here. And it's above the level of this pipe. So there's got to be a secondary pump here to pump it back in to their uh, primary tank. So the roots do absorb a lot more oxygen from the air because they just have the uh, nutrient flowing over them. They're not actually immersed in it at any point in time, which facilitates a faster growth. Uh, these particular trays best used for uh, plants with a smaller root base. Uh, this is used primarily for uh, lettuce and they're growing enough lettuce in this system right here. Uh, they sell it to the dining hall in front of their entire hydroponic uh, research operation. A deep water system, we don't have a lot of these in the US. Uh, there is one down in Arizona. It covers uh, several acres, uh, so they can be huge systems. Uh, they are used extensively in Japan. Uh, and the way they operate and it is actually one of the easiest systems to use, is the roots here are always suspended in water. Uh, and it's a static water because there's no circulation in it. Uh, you do have to have an air pump uh, with air stones to supply oxygen to the water because uh, it has to be a uh, artificial supply. And that keeps the roots from drowning. There's no emitters to clog, no drip lines. However, 
plants are susceptible to root rot uh, won't do very well in this kind of system. You'll see that they float on a styrofoam platform here. And the way this thing operates, particularly on the really big systems, is it won't be one big platform, it'll be a series of smaller platforms. And as one end matures, let's just say this end right here, they'll harvest this plant, push all these platforms forward, so the next plant in the series is at the end, and they'll put a new plant at the other end. And as they mature, they just keep moving in a, a rotational uh, fashion, and they harvest at one end, transfer new plants in at the other end. Uh, actually a fairly efficient system, uh, but you're limited on what you can actually put in it because of the potential for root rot. A drip system, this is one of them that I experimented with last year before I actually went uh, full bore into this thing. Uh, this is actually a fairly simple system as well. Uh, these are tomato plants and the emitters, which I ended up taking the emitters off of this one and I ended up plugging some of the lines because I was getting too much moisture in here, uh, too much nutrient solution. And it turned out working more as a uh, nutrient film system than anything else. Uh, but these lines will go on top of the media right in here, away from the uh, stem. And it just keeps the media moist and it flows down onto the roots as well. You want to use a very slow draining media, such as rock wolf or something like this. Uh, cocoa core, which we'll discuss later, would not work well on this type of system because the nutrient is constantly flowing and it'll wash your cocoa core right out of the uh, net pots. You can recapture the media in this system uh, fairly easily. You see the drain tube here, sump tank over here, and nutrient feed tube coming up here. Uh, the emitters do tend to clog easily though, which is why there's none on this system. Uh, I had to cut them all off and go just with uh, straight quarter inch tubing uh, flow directly onto the roots of the plants. This system did cause me a huge problem though that I want to tell you about. Uh, and it was designed. It wasn't that the system didn't work. Uh, I neglected to take into account the mass of the root ball on a tomato plant. And I actually had a several soil based tomato plants growing next to this in uh, five gallon buckets. The roots in the uh, control uh, plants flowed out of the buckets and into the ground and actually took over the ground and stuck the buckets to the ground when I went to pick them up. So you can imagine what a four inch PVC is gonna do with that size of a root ball. These plants got up to about six feet tall. Uh, they're indeterminate plants. They started producing fruit, a lot of fruit, and the fruit was about twice the size as the soil-based controls. Uh, they were ripening faster, and then all of a sudden the plants just started wilting and dying. And I found that I was getting nutrient running out and onto my support ledge here, rather than going into the system. And uh, I actually burned up a pump before I figured that out because uh, it emptied itself overnight and the pump just burned up. So I opened it up on one end and looked through it, could not see a thing. Turned out the roots of the plants had just taken over the entire uh, pipe and there was no way a nutrient could even get through it, which is what killed the plants. Uh, so I ended up tearing them out and uh, we are going a different direction with a much larger system. Uh, the system itself did work. Uh, it worked very well. If you decide to use something along this line, I would suggest at least an eight inch uh, PVC uh, if you use something along this line. Wicking systems, uh, very simple system, uh, no mechanical parts to it. Uh, nutrient solution, plants are separate. Basically this is an artist rendering here. You have your tank that holds your nutrient, something to wick that solution up into the uh, media and the roots, of course, are down inside the media here. Uh, it's very easy for this system to dry out in our climate. I have one of these set up, uh, well, I had one of these set up, I don't now, uh, which is right here. And you can say this is the tray here, it holds the solution. 
Uh, these trays, there's three of these in this uh, plant tray. It's set up a little bit higher so the media or the meat nutrient comes in contact with the media, which wicks it up into the uh, root systems of this basil. Requires a lot closer monitoring because it does dry out. Uh, best used for a light feeder because you'll go through the nutrients real fast as uh, everything dries out. And I found actually that the, this particular system works best for rooting plants. Uh, the basil that's in here was basil that was in another system that I had. Uh, I had several harvests off of it and the plants were starting to die. They were about nine months old. So I took cuttings off of them, put them in here and uh, started rooting the cuttings. And it worked very well for that. Uh, they rooted, oh gosh, within about a week, I had good plants that I could transfer into another hydroponic system. An aeroponic system, uh, a little bit more in depth, uh, more complicated. The roots are suspended continuously in the air and uh, there's not a root support form necessarily. So you can't use this for a large plant unless you support the plant itself. Uh, the nutrient sol solution is constantly being misted over the roots using a pond fogger or a uh, spray mister. Uh, the little sprayers they use for, uh, they're actually intended for drip systems at Home Depot work very well on this. And uh, there's several, uh, units that you can buy for your homes you just sell on a counter of this system uh, and they'll they're probably 12 inches about 24 inches and uh, maybe 12 inches deep and you can see this is all one tank nutrient solution at the bottom sprays it up and just falls right back down uh, fairly inexpensive unit uh, easy to build easy to set up um, and we'll talk about these more in depth later on in the program, uh, future weeks. So these are two of my vertical systems that I have set up. This system right here, the footprint is 48 square feet and is set up to hold 576 plants. Right now there's about 3,000 plants in there. Uh, and the reason that is because there are in each net pot, there are between six and eight plants. This is all stinging nettle. Uh, this system over here is a nutrient film system that I was experimenting with. And each of these towers here is set at about a 14 degree angle. So the nutrient flows down the inside of the pipe. Uh, it covers a little bit over 28 square feet, set up to hold 73 plants. They're spaced a little bit closer on this one than they are the other system. Um, one of the fears I have, and I actually had the, uh, the problems I have parsley growing in this one, is the parsley grew to about four feet. And it was actually, the weight was pulling the net pots out of the system itself. So I can see if you're growing something like uh, romaine lettuce, uh, that as it got top heavy, it could actually pull itself out of the system and you just kill your lettuce plant. So probably best for things like leaf lettuce, bok choy, uh, spinach, strawberries will grow well in here, uh, something of that nature um, for that particular type of system. But there again, if you've got a little bit of space, say on a uh, basement wall, that you can put in, it doesn't have to be this tall, um, you can put one of these in and take up very little floor space with it and grow a lot of stuff. One thing you always want to make sure that you do is keep spare parts on hand. Uh, there's a lot of mechanical pieces to a hydroponic system and parts fail. Uh, I have burned up two pumps now and uh, I'm just very glad that I, Becky had told me to keep a spare pump on hand. I did and it saved me. Uh, so thank you, Becky. Uh, you also want to maintain an air pump on hand. Um, I haven't had one of those go out yet, but if it does, you're getting no oxygen to your uh, plant roots. And power bars. I've had two power bars fail. Um, and this is something I had never believed I would ever see fail ever. And I've had two of them go out on me. Uh, the first time it went out, I was also remiss in that I hadn't checked the plants in about a week. 
and I came in and the lights were off, the pumps were off, uh, water was just stagnating in the trays, uh, had some plants die on it. And it took me a while to figure out that it wasn't a circuit breaker, that it wasn't the outlet, it was a power bar. Uh, very simple fix and fortunately I keep several on hand, but uh, you definitely wanna make sure that you're uh, checking everything at least every day uh, and have those parts that you can't just get easily. So the future of hydroponics, you know, we've seen that it uses less area, less water, um, which with the way our farm ground's going now is critical. Uh, family farms are being lost to development, uh, being sold off. Uh, the youth aren't going into farming as fast as they used to. Uh, they're going into other career fields. Um, and we're seeing that land just decrease or the amount of it. And we've got to have some way to produce our food. Uh, there is a farm over in Jackson, a hydroponic farm. Uh, and I forget the dimensions. I want to say it's 30 feet wide by 100 feet long. It's three stories tall and they produce all of the produce that's sold in Jackson, Wyoming out of that one uh, farm. And but like I say, and they use a greenhouse technique on it, uh, supplement with supplemental light, uh, lighting for it. Uh, so hydroponics does use more energy though. Uh, supplemental lighting does cost money. Uh, if you can use a greenhouse uh, with just the sun, it'll help out, but you do have to have uh, supplemental lighting at some point in time. Uh, you have to have something to run the pumps. So there is an extra cost for that energy and so forth. Uh, but you do have higher production, higher yields. And if you're working commercially with it, that's the key. And that'll actually outweigh the cost of the energy. Uh, you have a faster time to harvest, uh, which means uh, more crops per year. And the way you harvest with hydroponics is a lot gentler on the plant than it is through the soil-based methods. Uh, usually the soil-based plants end up getting torn up. Uh, and with hard hydroponics, it's very delicate. Everything's by hand and the uh, plants can keep producing with that. And you have a year round season and we don't worry about hail. And uh, that is very critical. And uh, after losing an entire crop here a couple of years ago, just as it was getting ready to harvest, uh, hail is a big factor to me. Uh, so my opinion is that hydroponics is the future of crop production, at least in those areas where it can be used. Uh, it's certainly not suitable for everything but where we can use hydroponics, I think that's the way we're gonna end up going. Uh, we may not see it in the next year or even 10 years, but uh, I do think we're gonna see hydroponics increasing uh, as the future rolls along. So that's pretty much the end of the presentation for tonight. Uh, like I say, it was an intro to hydroponics and next week we're going to actually get into the system itself and then the following week uh, we'll get into growing in the system and talk about some diseases and pests and things like that. So any questions for tonight? So Mike, if I, I, I don't know if I'm jumping ahead of the program or not, but how important is the water and the water quality and water pH? Should you get your water tested? Um, I didn't get my water tested per se, because we've just got good water out here and the, uh, uh, guy that runs groundwater for the state engineer lives across the road from me and he tells me how good the water is. But I do test the pH of my water. And mine started out uh, 20 years ago when I got here, it was 7.1. It's running 7.4 pH now. So it's actually got a little bit more alkali you know, over the years. And I don't know if that's a function of how much water is being pumped out or what's going on, but uh, it has increased a bit. And it, it's just a function, uh, having the right equipment, you can test a lot of that yourself. Uh, you don't expect any nutrients to be in the water. So you're gonna have to add those and uh, you know you're gonna have to add uh, some acidifier to the water. We'll talk about that in the future presentations, what to use. Um, but as long as you don't have just bad water, and if it's bad, you'll definitely know it because you'll taste it. Uh, it'll work fine for hydroponics. Because 
you know, it's, it's one thing to be on a well and you should have your well water tested, find out what the, at least the pH is and the, um, the SAR, sodium absor absorption rate and the EC, electric conductivity for salts. Mm -hmm. I know that the city of Cheyenne's water has got a pH of 8.5. Mm -hmm. And so, well, see, when you're hydroponics, though, you're te testing all that anyway, and you're going to have the equipment to do it. And you can te test your own water right there. And you, you need to know what it is before you start putting nutrients and such in it anyway. Okay. Because that's all part of your uh, daily monitoring. Okay. So, a couple questions. Um, Steve is asking when you finish all of the presentations, can we see your system? So, can we have a tour? Yes, of course. And you can have a tour anytime. Um, all that I ask is that you let me know in advance to make sure I'm home. And don't do it this week because this is a, the, a bad week. <laughs> <laughs> I won't say it's the week from, but it's pretty close to it. Yeah, well, <laughs> next week starts. Quick, I'm just busy as I'll get out this week. Yeah, um, well, next week is even, county fair, and then a couple weeks later is state fair. So, Next yeah. few weeks are going to be busy for a lot of us. Um, well, I have a few folks who come by and look at it, and uh, and some have just dropped in. I just happen to be here, and I don't mind showing it off at any point in time. If it's under construction, you need to understand it's going to be real messy. And I just finished building the uh, third system in the grow room, and I haven't cleaned up after it yet. And also just finished another harvest on the. Uh, uh, Singing nettle, and that is one of the messiest plants I've ever dealt with. And uh, so I've been doing a lot of cleanup from the uh, just from the harvest itself. So that's actually what's taking a lot of time this week trying to get some of that stuff cleaned up. Okay, so Mike from David, um, it says soil based plants have complex relations with fungi and bacteria along their root systems. Do you introduce mycorrhizae or beneficial soil bacteria into your nutrient systems? You can. Um, I haven't. And so far, I have had real good results um, without that. But I've also been uh, doing some research on the uh, mycorrhizae in the hydroponic systems. There hasn't been a lot of research on it that I've been able to find. Um, what I found, it says it can be beneficial. Uh, nothing that's proven that it really helps. Because you stop and think about what the mycorrhizae are doing is helping that nutrient intake. And you don't have that issue with the hydroponic system because everything's in contact and nutrients are uh, already broken down so the plant can absorb it. Okay, so I'm going to skip a question and jump ahead here. Patricia's <laughs> comment is, Tomatoes do not like wet feet, so how do they do in hydroponics? I'm going to say tomatoes excel in hydroponics. They do excel in hydroponics. Um, and you don't have to worry about time of year. I'm just getting my tomato starts in now. And, yeah. and I'm not worried about it because I'll have fresh tomatoes all winter to sell. Yep. Um, and, and, and oddly enough, so I'm just going to add here, Peggy, um, or Patricia here, the, um, in states like Louisiana, Mississippi, Texas, and those really hot, humid states, they actually grow more tomatoes hydroponically in greenhouses than they do outside, and they have better control of what's going on. And CSU's done quite a bit of research on that also. So tomatoes excel hydroponically, and almost, almost better than outside. Well, a uh, good example, I talked about the uh, experiment I did, the one where the system failed, not uh, the tomatoes. The uh, hydroponic plants and the soil-based control plants were planted at the same time out of the same seed pack. The hydroponic plants were twice the size at the same point. They were producing tomatoes faster and twice the size of the soil-based tomatoes, and they were ripening faster until the roots filled the system and shut off all the nutrients. Um, and then uh, if you go to uh, the University of Arizona's website, you have to dig around a little bit, they have actually a presentation on hydroponic tomatoes. And just looking at some of those they have in there, like 10 or 12 feet tall and producing for a year. 
uh, just phenomenal systems. And we'll go over some tomatoes hydroponically and uh, strawberries also, which don't like their feet wet, but another one that excels with the hydroponics. And Mike, I've got two questions here about the nutrient system and testing the nutrient system. And, and so now we're getting more into the science of hydroponics with these yeah, we'll questions. Get into next week. <laughs> but go ahead, what's the question? Yeah, it's, so I've got, how do you know how much nutrient to add and how do you test it? And what is the recipe for the nutrient solution? Okay, you do not make your own nutrient solution. You buy it. Uh, it is very carefully controlled, very carefully balanced, and there is test equipment that you'll also have to buy. Like I say, it is an expense to having a hydroponic system, uh, but you have to have some test equipment. Um, and we'll talk about the different types. Uh, I think it's next week, actually, and uh, and the types of acid and everything to use to acidify your water, uh, but it's, it's this presentation unto itself. Yeah, the, the nutrient solution is, is incredibly complicated, complex, and like Mike said, you don't want to make your own, and you never, never want to use miracle Grow. and there's very specific solutions for everything that you grow. So there's a tomato formula, a lettuce formula, a strawberry formula, a pepper formula, an herb formula. So it's it's all very, very specific to what you're growing. And remember, they're all formulated so they can be absorbed by the roots without mycorrhiza being present. Yep. Which is one reason you don't want to make your own. Um, I did take, uh, I assume everybody on is probably a master gardener. And when I went through the class in 2016, Catherine gave us a recipe for a fertilizer, which I have been using in the soil-based systems ever since, and it's wonderful. And my thought was, is, well, why can't I use it in hydroponics? <laughs> so I sent a uh, sample down to CSU, and they did some analysis on it for me, and uh, specifically to answer that question. And the first thing on the report was, do not use for hydroponics. <laughs> and, and then they told me why, and it makes sense. Um, it's just not designed for hydroponic systems. It's designed for soil-based systems. Uh, so you definitely want to buy your uh, nutrients. And like I say, we're going to discuss nutrients in depth uh, next week. So the answer is stay tuned. Yes, definitely. And so we'll be, meeting, we'll be meeting again on this topic on the 29th of July, same time, same station. <laughs> I have uh, my Zoom room ID, and that's the one I just use consistently throughout. So it'll be the same Zoom room ID, same time, 630, and a week from now. And Mike will take us to part two of growing hydroponically. So any other questions, thoughts, comments? And again, y'all are welcome to unmike yourself, unmute yourself and ask. You've got at least 15 minutes and I'm here all night, so I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mike. If you have a question, please go ahead and speak up. Don't be shy. So, so we got a lot of thank yous here. Well, thank you all for coming. Appreciate it. Okay. So if, if there, Becky, I see you're on. Um, do you have, for what Mike has talked about at this point, do you have any thoughts or comments? Well, my first comment is what a nice job, Mike. Um, I loved all your slides. and. Uh, Oh, by the way, this is Becky Matheson, and uh, Mike's been asking me about my hydroponic system, which That's I ran for 13 <laughs> years. <laughs> and what I raised was cherry tomatoes, and they were delicious. But after 13 years, I was worn out, 
and I wanted to do other things. So I'm, I'm glad that Mike is taking up this task and, and teaching us all about his projects. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Beck. I appreciate you being here. Your input's always welcome. You did a great job. Oh, thank you. So any other questions, thoughts, or comments? I have, I have a question. Um, I, I noticed this was being recorded. Is there going to is this going to be available to go back and review at a later date? Absolutely. I send this to my amazing secretary, who <laughs> very painstakingly goes through it, edits it, and then adds closed captioning to it, so that if you miss some words or something, it's in closed caption, so you can read it. Okay. So it'll be available, and if you go to the Laramie County Extension webpage, it is there. And Beth, is it possible to get a link on our website for that? There should be. And it'll also be on the Laramie County Master Gardeners website. Okay, if if I can't find it, I'll give Leroy a call. Oh yeah, Leroy knows how to get in touch with me. Absolutely. In fact, I'll be up there next week, so I'll talk with him about tell, it. And tell, him, <clears throat> tell him hi for me. I will. <laughs> so here is the website. I put it in the chat box. So there's the website that you can go to, and it'll be under Ag and Hort. And we have our own YouTube channel, and so that's where it'll be at, is on our personal YouTube channel. And then, Mike, one more question from Steve. Can you grow flowers using the hydroponics, and do they require a special mixture, as does each vegetable? You can grow flowers. In fact, uh, CSU was doing some flower trials with hydroponics. Um, they didn't talk a lot about it during the... Uh, Advanced Master Gardener class last year, but they did uh, discuss that they were trying it. Uh, I don't know a lot about growing flowers, but yes, you can grow flowers. It will have its own nutrient solution, and probably for each uh, type of flower, I would think, just like vegetables, uh, each variety has its own specific solution. I'm sure flowers are the same way. Uh, but understand, everything is not right for hydroponics, uh, be it flowers, vegetables, uh, they tell me blueberries can't be grown hydroponically, and I'm going to try eventually to try to prove them wrong, but uh, I may fail at that too, who knows. But, uh, you know, corn won't be a good uh, candidate for hydroponics. Uh, the grains won't be uh, larger shrubs. Uh, you might be able to start them hydroponically, but you won't be able to grow them that way. Uh, a lot of the flowers actually are uh, for the nurseries, are started hydroponically, uh, it's cleaner. And you don't have to worry about weed seeds getting into your uh, piece of seeds that you're packaging. Um, there's a lot of advantages to it. And as people start learning more about it and uh, moving that direction, I really foresee more hydroponics being available. But setting up a large commercial system is horrendously expensive. Uh, and there again, we'll talk about some of the costs in uh, future presentations. Any more questions? So from yeah, Nancy, do you need fun. special systems for different plants because of different nutrients? Uh, so in other yeah. words, do you need individual systems for, you know, if you're going to do strawberries versus tomatoes versus peppers? Uh, yes, you do. Um, different systems are best for different types of plants. I am going to experiment with tomatoes in a uh, ebb and flow system and see how that works. I'm also going to put strawberries in the same system with them. The nutrient requirements are different, but they're very close. And uh, what I'm trying to do is uh, root some strawberries out of my soil-based strawberry patch 
um, in a, uh, I, I can't say sterile environment, but a clean environment. And I'll transfer those over into the uh, indoor system. And I did it last year and I got good root systems coming up, but I waited too late. It was uh, towards the end of October when I started. And uh, although they were starting to get some roots, it wasn't good enough to transfer over at the time. Uh, so rooting them, I think, is going to work fine. I did have an issue that we'll actually go into, but I'll tell you about it now anyway. Uh, don't ever take a plant out of soil, wash the roots, and put it in a hydroponic system. You're just asking for all kinds of grief. Uh, I did that. The first thing I tried was strawberries. I... Uh, I have a beautiful strawberry patch, a very high production uh, patch, and I dug up some plants, washed the roots real good, put them in the system, and they grew and they grew and they grew, and all of a sudden they started wilting and dying and rotting, and I had gray mold everywhere. And uh, that is very difficult to wash out of a system. Uh, you got to take the entire system down, sterilize it, clean it, and it's an absolute nightmare. So just a word to the wise, leave soil-based plants in the soil and start everything fresh for hydroponics. Hmm. Anything else? Well, I'm not seeing any other questions. Thank you, Mike. You're welcome. Enjoyed it. Thanks for coming, everybody. All right. Um, no more questions. I will see everybody, hopefully, next week. Say, again, same, same time, same station, same location. <laughs> and Mike will start us on part two. So, again, bring your questions, and we will try to help you along with growing hydroponically. So, Mike... Again, thank you very much for being our instructor tonight. And everybody, thanks for taking some time out of your evening to join us. So you all have a good week. And stay safe and have fun in your garden. Good evening, everybody. Take care. Thanks, guys. Okay. Good night.